Welcome back to RC Shenanigans. Today I'll be showing you guys how to build this RC jet for $100 and make it go over 100 miles an hour. What is going on everyone welcome back to rc shenanigans today we're going to be building a foam board jet now however i did have one of these before i'll go ahead and show a picture of me building it before sorry that there's a bunny in the picture but go ahead and show that real quick but i was using black foam board in that which i haven't been able to find regular white foam board so i've been having to build my planes with either the super thick stuff right here which i will make a video on this airplane and also, I've been building it out of this black foam board. Now, I actually just found some white, so I'm gonna be end up making a new plane out of this white foam board. But there are a few tr tricks that I am gonna do still using the black foam board to prevent myself from having to paint this airplane and losing orientation with, with that thing when I'm flying. Because again, I'm making a jet out of this thing, which first of all, if I'm gonna build this thing, I am gonna need to clean off that table right there. All right, now for this airplane, it's mostly based off of a Mirage design. I'm not exactly sure if I will be adding canards or not, but we'll see at the end of the video or like while I'm building it, see if I end up liking it or not. However, the maiden flight of this will not be in the video. I'll just be showing you how to build one of these airplanes, but still there'll be a lot of useful information if you haven't built an airplane yet. Plus jets, I would say are more easier to make compared to other airplanes that are out there, which would be harder. But let's go ahead and I'll show you what materials you will need to build this all airplane. All right, so here are all the materials you will need to build this airplane. You're gonna need a hot glue gun, a yardstick, one spar, you can usually get these from a Home Depot or Ace Hardware by you. Another spar, you can usually find this from someone else. And you'll need three servos, two for ailerons, so they should be identical with the same amount of length on the control rods, control arms, same servo and all that. Then the rudder servo, which it doesn't really matter. This is just kind of a cheaper and older one I have. And then you will also need a 64 millimeter EDF and a 4S ESC that will plug in there. And then you will also need two sheets of black foam board and then three sheets of white. Now I'm making this in a way so you won't end up needing to paint it. But however, the bottom of the wings will be made out of the black. The top will be made out of the white, just for orientation. Same with the canopy will be made out of black. And the same with the rudder will also be made out of black. The top of the fuselage will be white. And all that other stuff that you need to add on just in case. I'll show all that through the video. But for the hot glue gun, you will need a few extra sticks. Probably about, I'd recommend about four or five sticks of hot glue just for building the airplane. Just because you're going to be needing a lot of hot glue. But... Let's go ahead and start the build and I'll go ahead and show you guys all the measurements that you will need to do and get to build your airplane. All right, basically for your first step of this building this airplane, you're gonna need to make your wings. Now, there's, you know, you're not gonna have to mold wings over like you do with a lot of other foam board planes. It's super simple like this airplane is to build. It's so easy. So basically what you're gonna need to do is you're need, gonna need to make one larger. <laughs> A right triangle specifically and it's going to be measured at the bottom at about 12 inches there and then the top is going to be measured at about 22 inches and then you're going to need to make another one a smaller triangle smaller right triangle that's going to be about 17 inches by nine inches and now the next step is is now you're going to have to put a spar through the wings like this. You're gonna basically have your wings like this here. And then you're gonna have to put your engine in here and then you'll have to glue a spar right behind it. However, the only issue is, is this is a really hard step to do. So it's gonna take you a while to try to get the amount of glue to glue on that engine or that motor, the EDF, whatever you like to call it right there. So let's go ahead and I'll go ahead and cut to me 
trying to glue that thing All right, on. So we're gonna have one small issue with this is the spar that I have is too long. So what I need to do is I need to bend it a little bit. So it'll go over here like this for that. Cause if you just have regular foam board, your wings will fold because you're gonna be pulling high G's, especially with this jet. So that's what you're gonna end up needing to do with your- All right, so after I ended up bending that wire, it doesn't exactly matter where you put your spar in the plane. It just matters that it is gonna hold up for the stress that you're gonna, when you're gonna be flying this airplane. So I would recommend that you do have it out to at least here on your airplane and on your wings. But now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue the spar in. Make sure it's the same distance in these wings as this EDF right here which you can go ahead and measure yours because they might be different by even the smallest bit. Then we'll glue all of this stuff in there. All right, now that you have your spar glued in there, now you're gonna have to repeat the same side, the same with your other side, but still gotta make sure you maintain the same amount of space that this EDF is gonna perfectly fit right in the middle there. This, not not the little lip right here or these things, just the actual width of the casing itself, which is from this side to this side. Not this side, not this from that, but from here to there on the thinner part. Cause these are gonna latch and that are gonna latch onto the side of the foam board is where you're gonna glue it. And if you can't, and if it's too wide, you won't be able to glue it on there and you'll end up using too much hot glue or it won't end up working out. But I'm gonna go ahead and do that. But then also I'm gonna glue on these, which are just gonna fit right on top. And again, we're gonna leave a little bit of a space right here so we can actually mold. I'll, I'll explain later on in the video exactly why we do that. And then we're gonna leave a space on here like this. And then there's gonna be a lot of space at the end. And I'll give you guys the measurements after I'm done doing this. All right, now we got all those done. Now what we need to do is now we need to glue this in. Now it's not really exactly sure where, I don't really know exactly where to put it. It's kind of just, you got to guess where to put it. And I recommend you usually want to put it a little bit in front from halfway from your spar to the end, or just about, I'd recommend about, let's take a look here, probably around seven, uh, it's seven to six inches from the end of your airplane is where you want to put your EDF. So we'll mount that right there and I'll go ahead and cut back. All right, now we have the EDF installed. We just glued it in there with some hot glue. And the next step is, is to take some foam board. And from this point, you're going to probably need about a good, however many inches this is from my spar. This looks like it's about a good three, three and a half inches. We're going to take it from here and here, and we're gonna take a piece of foam board, and we're gonna perfectly cut it so it's gonna cover all of this, and it's gonna go out probably another, I'd say about four inches. So I'll go ahead and give you my measurement once I'm done cutting it. I'll go ahead and show you guys that, but let's do that real quick, and I'll cut right back right to when I have that done. All right, now that we have that piece on, it ended up being about 16 and a half inches to the, here to there. Now, this measurement doesn't really matter as long as it fits between your two pieces. However, you want to keep this gap that's right here about the same as this gap right here. Mainly, that's just your main want when it comes to this. However, when you're building your airplane, even though if it is a little bit smaller here than that before, you're going to maybe want to kind of take this part stretch it out a little bit and then squeeze your foam board in there, which that's what I ended up having to do. That's why you see all those wrinkles right there. But still, it is a foam board plane. It's not gonna look anything like those $3,000 F22s that you'll see at the same time. Ready? Three, two, and go. Three hundred. Now the reason why 
I'm bending this thing across the tables because it makes it way easier to bend. And also, you wanna peel off one side of your foam board so that way it also bends way easier. And uh, you can go ahead and experiment yourself. It's just the easiest way I found to bend your foam board. However, it is a little bit of a tedious task trying to bend off, take off the paper on one side. All right, now that we have one side done, it's kind of, it's really time consuming. It might take you about 30 minutes, literally just to get this top part on, just because it's super hard and finicky to get. However, once you do get that done, um, the next few steps are pretty easy, but I'll go ahead and cut to me uh, with this all done, and then I'll go ahead and show you guys the next step in this build video. All right, now that we have that mounted, now the next step is going to be forming the nose of the airplane which is about, we're gonna do about four inches from the leading edge of the airplane. So we're gonna cut just this top part off and not the bottom, because we still wanna keep this because that's where we're gonna put the nose of the airplane on. And there will be a little bit of a hole right there and we actually want that so we can get air into the airframe so it can cool down all the electronics, battery and all that other stuff in it. Now, we'll do this at the end, but that gap between the top of the uh, EDF and the top of the fuselage we are gonna go ahead and just slide a piece of foam board right on top of that. It doesn't have to be perfect, because again, this is just a foam board airplane and all that, so it's not a big deal. But still, we'll get that all figured out. But first, I'll go ahead and cut cut that off. And I'll. Now, and after I'll you have ahead. that cut, now you're gonna go ahead and take the same length that this is, that it's curved right here, and you're just gonna cut a piece that's about this, but it's gonna be a little bit longer and you're gonna cut it in kind of a triangle. And it's gonna perfectly form down like that. And I'll go ahead and show you guys what that'll look like after I get it cut. And, right, I'll and I said, I would show you the shape of this, but really it's just kind of, you take it, you form around and then you kind of just make a cone. It's basically what you do. You take, basically make an ice cream cone and then you just cut half of it. And it should align perfectly. Now it should be flat along the bottom with the airplane. And you also should have a gap right there. You actually, want that if you want you can cover it up but i usually keep it just so air gets in there and it cools off all my electronics in the airframe now with it you can kind of start to see the shape of the airplane and exactly what it's going to look like but once we get the rudder on there and the canopy well it's just going to be a flat piece of foam board right there or wherever you prefer to put it and then yeah but now we got to work on the bottom of the airplane and get the intake all set up because we will not be doing the intake from the front of it as you can tell we're actually gonna be making the intake from the bottom of the airplane. Now, it's basically just gonna be a flat piece of foam board that you're just gonna shove right there in this gap. And you're gonna make it so it goes to the top of this EDF. Now, if you wanna, you can curve it if you want more of a clean seal around your EDF, but it's not really that, that big of a deal. You just wanna make sure not, the EDF is not gonna be sucking in anything from the inside of this fuselage and all that. So that's what we'll do first. And I'll go ahead and cut to me when I have that all done. After all right, this. now that we have that foam piece right there, now the next step is is to pick, make that little foam piece I'll go over the top and all the way through the end here. So I'll go ahead and show you guys what that should look like when I'm done. All right, now that we have that installed, now the next thing we'll do is go ahead and make our cover over here. Now it's basically the same idea as the top right here, but this time it has to be exactly exactly covering over the top of this. So you can go ahead and take a measuring tape that can bolt, bend over yours, and then just basically make, basically make that all the way through the end here. It should start from the very front here, and then it should just go all the way by the, to the end. Now, it should cover up that ugly uh, amount of hot glue that's right there, but if it doesn't, it's fine. It's literally not a big deal. It won't affect how your airplane flies. But let's go ahead and do that. I'll go ahead and show you guys what it'll look All like. Right, now that's done. Now the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and make, it's like this strip right here and it's gonna kind of make more shape to the bottom of the airframe, but mostly because we don't want the bottom of this thing to look like a f***ing cake. So now that's what we'll do next. And yeah, I'll go ahead and show you guys what it what it looks like when we're done. And you'll kind of get the gist of what I'm talking about and you'll be able to copy it really. All right, now there's your strip that I was talking about. It's just literally a flat piece of foam board cut. And it should be the exact height as this part right here. And I know the airplane looks kind of weird at the moment, because mostly because we don't have that rudder or that canopy, but I trust trust me when I say the moment we add that rudder and that canopy, the airplane should look at least 20,000 times better. Now, I did go ahead and cut a hole out 
of that for your wires and you do want your wires coming out of the bottom of this not the top because this is where you're going to mount your ESC it's going to be on the outside of the airplane so it gets the most amount of cooling now the next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and I'll add the rudder and I'll also go ahead and cut the canopy and I'll show you guys what that looks like and you can just base off of what I have and make that All with right. now as you can see the airplane actually looks like an actual airplane now now the canopy is just literally just like sort of a circle or like a quarter of a circle it's just flat just because again it's going to be way too complicated just to try to make that nice shape with like actual 3d but there isn't really a point to it it's just going to take too much time and it's not really worth it same thing with this thing it's just a flat piece of foam board and i kind of just chose this colorway mostly because it's going to help me with orientation and if you want you can add stickers to it i do have a few i'm probably going to add to it it might look good, might not. I don't know yet. We'll go ahead and look, but I'll go ahead and show you guys what that looks like with those on. All right, now I took some stickers off of an E-Flight Apprentice, so I think it looks really well. But still, the reason why I did this before all the electronics is because I'm going to be putting servos here, and trying to fit the sticker around the servo would be literally impossible. So I decided to just put on the stickers now and kind of just give you a look at what this thing is going to look like when it's all done. But as you can see, this airplane looks really well. It weighs barely anything at the moment, but we still need to add all of our electronics. But still, it's a great looking airplane. Can't wait to get it flying, but I'll go ahead and cut to me installing the electronics. All right, now that all of your servos are installed in your airplane, now the next thing to do is basically find a place to wire them all up and put them in your main fuselage. However, the issue is with that, we also need to make a hatch, which, which is probably my least favorite part with building these kind of airplanes because it needs to be right off of the side. And the best way to do that is to cut a little hatch right here and I'll do it right over the sticker so I don't need to add tape. And if, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll show you what it looks like. Right now, here's your hatch. It's a little bit difficult at first, but I recommend adding a piece of tape so you can do that. But this is what your hatch, can, hatch is gonna look like. All your electronics will go in here, but if you wanna look at basically how to set up all your wires, how to do all that, recommend going on another YouTube video. But again, that's the end of this video. I'll go ahead and cut off now, but thanks for watching. I upload every single Saturday at 9 a.m. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video on RC Shenanigans.